How many people have scoliosis? One common question during a consultation with a scoliosis patient is, of course, is how many people actually have scoliosis and how common actually is it? Well, you know, when people think of scoliosis, they kind of think it's just kind of a curved spine. But the truth is, scoliosis is more than just a curved spine. It's when a, cur when a spine actually curves out of its normal position, and it also has a three-dimensional rotational component or a twist component associated with it. In order for a scoliosis to be a scoliosis, there must be rotation. There can't just be a bend, right? The rotation ha must exist. There are natural ranges for de the degree of curvatures from the spine from the side meaning we know it should have normal curves in the neck, in the mid-back, in the low back, and these curves are the way the body adapts to uh, compressional forces. But from the front, the spine should be completely straight, and the ideal is zero degrees all the way down. However, there is a minimal threshold in which they start diagnosing scoliosis, and that is when we have a curve or a Cobb angle measurement of 10 degrees or greater with the associated rotation that I mentioned. By the way, the rotation always is into the concavity in the vast majority of cases. If it ever rotates to the concavity, that's normally a very unusual presentation and normally warrants further investigation. So how many people actually develop scoliosis and who does scoliosis mostly affect? Well, unfortunately, scoliosis can affect all ages from infants to elderly, and it can affect everybody in between. I've seen patients as, as early as months old, and unfortunately, patients elderly in 90, 95, 96, 97 years old have been the oldest patients we've treated. So there's a wide variety of patients that it could unfortunately affect. However, scoliosis definitely is most commonly diagnosed in the adolescent form, and it's normally diagnosed somewhere between this uh, age of 10 to about 18 years of age because this is when children are going through growth spurts, and they're going through their adolescent growth spurts, and when curves tend to progress in this stage, and this is when there's normally scoliosis screenings that are happening, and they normally can be evaluated and checked at that moment. However, many, many, unfortunately, go undiagnosed. They actually never get found or they never get diagnosed in this stage, and this patient will actually never know they have scoliosis and may find out later on in the adult stage. There are many different types of scoliosis cases, but however, 80% of all types of scoliosis pa uh, patients are diagnosed with a certain diagnosis called idiopathic scoliosis. Now, idiopathic scoliosis means there's no clear association or single cause associated with the scoliosis, meaning that it's a multifactorial problem. There's many, many different variables as somebody's growing and developing that could possibly cause scoliosis in adolescence, and there isn't even idiopathic adult cases, meaning there's no clear reason or why the patient is developing scoliosis in the adult form. However, the other 20 or so percent have a, a wide variety, the most common being something like neuromuscular scoliosis. This is when a patient has a neuromuscular condition, something like uh, cerebral palsy, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, Marfan syndrome, something that affects the connective tissue. Neuromuscular scoliosis normally means that the either the nerve system, the spinal cord is being affected that's causing some type of scoliosis, or the connective tissue is, be, is causing some type of scoliosis. And normally the connective tissue is either too laxed or too stiff or too rigid. Both of these are associated with the causation of scoliosis. Congenital scoliosis is another one in this 20%. Congenital scoliosis is when you're truly born with scoliosis. It's some type of genetic variant that actually happens during growth, uh, during development in utero, that one of the vertebrae of the spine doesn't fully develop properly. It's called a hemivertebra, and you have a congenital malformation within the spine that would lead to scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is a scoliosis that's also in this 20%, and this normally happens in the adult stage. This is when something happens to the spine that causes the spine to deteriorate. Normally, it could be unresolved traumas, un unresolved injuries that left that caused a very small deviation, and this deviation grows and causes degeneration to the discs and the bones and muscles and ligaments around the area, which can cause a sharp curve. Most common age that degenerative scoliosis is typically diagnosed is going to be at 50 plus years of age and it's definitely more common for whatever reason in females being diagnosed normally around menopause. And the last type is traumatic scoliosis. Now, this is a little different than degenerative. Traumatic scoliosis is when you, when you, the spine goes through a significant trauma and creates a significant scoliosis at that moment. It's not a small injury that left uncorrected that develops into scoliosis over time, but it's a true, and this can also affect children or adult cases. So you can see there's a wide variety. There's even, there's even types of scoliosis that I didn't include here, but these are the vast majorities. But so again, 
majority are idiopathic, and then the other 20% are on the other side, neuromuscular, congenital, degenerative, or traumatic types of scoliosis. So actually, how many people have scoliosis? How many people is it affecting? Well, when people think of scoliosis, they normally think of children. They normally think of kids and adolescents. And they think the majority of patients that have scoliosis are actually adolescent cases. But unfortunately, that is not true. Um, the National Scoliosis Foundation puts a current estimate to about 7 million people in the United States alone living with scoliosis. However, this estimated is only the people in the world uh, that are actually Diagnosed. These are not the people that are actually undiagnosed cases or necessarily the ones that develop scoliosis in the adult form, plus how many people are living worldwide. So you can see this number of 7 million living with scoliosis in the United States is only a small percentage of actually what how many cases actually exist out there. It unfortunately can become, it's, it's much more common than we think. Scoliosis definitely is the most common associated with school dates children. And we anticipate somewhere about 400 to 40 to 440,000 doctor visits done on a yearly basis uh, done as a result of scoliosis. However, it is definitely more common in adult forms. We, we know more patients actually have scoliosis in the adult form. This 440,000 doctor visits accounts for 20% of all spinal conditions in the U.S. But in the adult form, there are very, very big estimates in terms of how many people actually have scoliosis. There are studies that estimate anywhere from 12 to 15%, 20%, and there are studies that actually found that about 68% of adults over the age of 60 possibly could have scoliosis. So what we know is that scoliosis, or the amount of people with scoliosis, increases with age, meaning as we look as every decade of life, the percentage of people that have scoliosis will increase. So if adolescence, it could be somewhere between five and 7%. And as we increase every decade, it actually increases to when we get to ages 60 and 70 years of age, it can be up to 50% of the people actually have scoliosis because these are all the adolescent cases that didn't get diagnosed and it progressed as the adult form. This is all your adult onset cases, all your traumatic cases, they're all adding into the pool to we end up with this very large segment of population that actually has scoliosis in later stage life. So scoliosis is way more common than people think. The number one thing that you can do if you have scoliosis is definitely to treat it early. The one thing in common in all those things I mentioned, as people age, their curve gets bigger. As the curve gets bigger, it becomes more difficult to, to treat. So treating curves early, being proactive to curves, even though the number one recommendation for scoliosis in most cases is just let, leave it alone, let it get worse and deal with it then. Normally at that stage, you're normally dealing with very difficult treatment option decisions and very invasive treatment options. So therefore acting proactively, treating curves while they're small is definitely the way to, to actually manage your scoliosis, especially if you're already aware that you have it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.